This is Sai Leslie for the Gels TV, live at the world famous Ibrook Stadium. I've got a special guest here today for an exclusive interview, the Rangers legend, Mr Mark Walters. Mark, welcome home. Thank you, thanks for having me. Yeah, I love it, love it. Love coming back. It's been good. It's great seeing you as a kid. You were one of my favourite Rangers players. Uh, love the wing skills and that, but tell me, see when you walk back in the doors there, I can see the, the change in your attitude and the... The wee shuffle coming in. How did it feel? What's the memories of walking back in? Yeah, unbelievable memories. Um, I remember the first time I did when uh, Graham Sooners brought me here, and it was late at night at the time, and uh, walking up those stairs, and then Graham actually opening the uh, shutters down for me so I could have a look at the stadium. He got the lights on, and um, seeing the old, old stadium lit up, although there was nobody there, the atmosphere even then with no one in there was electric. So it's great memories coming back here. Yeah. Ah, good stuff. And before you came in, you done a wee shuffle back into the car. What were you going? Did you forget something? <laughs> yeah, I forgot my tie. Yeah, I, 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 I always remember when I first came here. Uh, came here and I had no tie on. And um, Graham says a couple of things they have to do when you come to uh, go to a Rangers as a player, uh, or full stop, you have to come and we have to wear a tie. So I had to go and get my tie back on and uh, feel like the old days again. Ah, is that happening in our club? Not anybody else in the world you've been? No, not not any other club. I mean, uh, at some of the clubs we could come in vests, never mind uh, colour and tie. But at uh, Rangers, it's a special place, and you have to have a, uh, a colour and tie on, which makes you feel special in itself. I mean, you see that people people are very uh, vocal about the fact that we're anti uh, they call it anti football, basically more anti modern football, where the things are changing for a different degree. Like so you said, turning up with a vest. Do you think that's special that Rangers have got those those Standard still? Oh, absolutely. I mean, funny enough, it made me change my attitude to all when I dressed the way I went to uh, clubs or games or whatever. Because, um, you know, we are role models to some kids, especially. And if we look smart and, you know, look, look prepared that we, you know, we've got to do a, a day's work, if you like, then it, it's good for everybody. So, um, although maybe people might not think it's important, you know, I think it's important and it's a tradition that Rangers have and it's a fantastic one. That's lovely to hear that people still appreciate the standards of the club. Uh, Bill Struth enforced them to a the degree that people still, the old people, the young people, mm. they, they look forward to seeing Rangers players in shirt and tie and mm. conducting themselves in a the proper manner. So just back to what we're here for today, you're, you're obviously launching your new book, Winging It. Yeah, Winging It, yeah, it's an appropriate title obviously with my position I played and uh, a lot of my uh, colleagues used to say I was winging it anyway, you know what I mean? I will. Winding them up in that. So, so it's, a, it's a great title and it's... It, it tells them that my, uh, my start of my career from the bottom at Aston Villa, cleaning boots, uh, collecting footballs um, from Cabbage Patch uh, Farms where the lads used to kick the balls in there. So it's a you know, it's good in-depth uh, of my life and my football career. Yeah. Right, so I mean, the clubs that you played for, you played for Aston Villa, you played mm. with Rangers. Mm. And before you came to Rangers, I believe uh, the club that you were named, uh, named after. Technically, tried to sign you, is that right? Was that the team you supported as a kid? Oh, no, definitely not. No, no, I didn't support Everton, but uh, although it did follow me all over my me, me life, never mind my football career, but uh, no, no, it, uh, it's just, it's just uh, my mother's Jamaican and uh, in, in the West Indies, it's quite a, um, a common name, believe it or not, Everton. But although Everton's obviously a, a big club and fantastic club, no, I was never an Everton supporter. Although I nearly joined there at one stage. Um, very close. Uh, it's a, you know, it is a great club, but... Uh, uh, the options I had would front of was uh, was Glasgow Rangers, and um, when I weighed up everything, and thankfully um, Rangers was a club for me. Yeah. What was the difference? What was what made you make that choice? Honestly, it's walking through those marble stairs and um, going up there, and then uh, um, I played at Everton before, so I knew what Everton looked like. But going up and and open, when, when Graham shut, opened the shutters and put the lights on for me, it was just an amazing uh, atmosphere. Even though say, even though it was empty. And I just thought, yeah, this, I could definitely play here with all the other pluses that Glasgow Rangers had. I was like, yeah, it's got to be the club for me. Brilliant. So later on in your career, you went to Liverpool and you also went to Bristol and Swindon, but you also yeah. had a few few small clubs you played for on loan as well. Yeah, yeah, I was on loan at Bristol, no, bigger point, I was on loan at Wolves, Wolverhampton Wanderers, and I was on loan at Stoke City. And um, I even played uh, non league as well for a little bit. Um, I think. Uh, Players always want to retire, but I think football retired me in the end. You know, I had to uh, play nearly to 40, played non-league. So, 
he was good. I don't always love playing him. Well, for any of the younger kids, the younger generation are watching you, they didn't get the benefit that I did to watch you. They're probably missing you on the, the big stage, the seven aside football. Was that going all together for Rangers? Yeah, yeah, yeah near enough. Because uh, every time I, I move on a football pitch, I seem to get injured now. So uh, I, I try and run out uh, occasionally, but I, my my only proviso is that I have to start fit. If I'm, if I'm the injured starting, then I won't play. But if, I'm, if I can get on the pitch and start fit, then invariably I'll come off injured. But uh, as long as I start fit, I'll have a go, yeah. So we don't, never rule out another for a one no, more. No, no, no. I'll be the oldest player in the world, I think, no doubt. Just a love of the game. Yeah. Mark, the, just on your Rangers career, obviously Glasgow's probably the biggest city in the world, in my opinion. It's got to be the biggest for rivalries and mm. passion. And uh, obviously, you've got the Rangers in the city, the most successful football club in the world. Yeah. You've came here, you probably didn't understand a lot about Scottish football, about the culture and that. Mm. Your first game, you're just surrounded by hate, bigotry, and people that basically try to abuse you for the start of the game to the end. Mm. The football won at the end of the day. You were at Celtic Park. It was an old firm game, probably the biggest game you're ever going to play in your life. You are there. Mm. How did that feel? Yeah, it was very intimidating, there's no doubt about it. So, you know, I'd been pre-warned what to expect, so although um, you can't really you know, legislate for what was going to happen, I had an idea at least anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a, it was an unbelievable um, atmosphere in itself, and I was you know I was prepared to put up with anything just to be involved with Glasgow Rangers and the great players I had in the in the, in the um, changing rooms. You know, you know uh, McCoy, Durant. Great characters that pull you through it. Yeah, yeah, especially Durant. He pulled me through uh, that game, especially as I had a five minute spell where I was just kicking the ball anyway. Frustration. Yeah, uh, not not really. Just that I was so 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 nervous. Yeah, and uh, you know people are draining and that calm me down. So it's calm down. You know, you're not that bad a player. Are you? <laughs> so it was just a great, great, great place to be. And um, although yes, there was a lot of problems, I was prepared to overcome anything. It was actually a great game of football that day when when it when it did get to kick off after the shameful scenes. The the big thing for me was the first twenty minutes. Was it you mm. done the double shuffle for the first time? Okay. Uh, after you done that, that you you won the range of supporters heart. She came mm. right to his. Yeah, yeah. As I said, I, I, I mean, it is a blur. I do remember the, uh, the goals that uh, I was, for some reason I was in the, in the box when they scored their goal, but bits and pieces um, I remember, obviously the, uh, the thing, the objects that were thrown at me, I remember that. But um, I don't know if that's because I played that many games, but most games are a bit of a blur for me, yeah. unless I score or something happens to me. But uh, that game, most of it I remember, as in before the game, for instance, I was a bit ill, I, was, I don't know if it was nervous tension, sick in the changing rooms yeah. probably just just nervous of what was going to happen and uh, yeah it was, a, it was a great great game although we lost but it, for me it was just uh, just great to be there and be involved in the game and um, I'd started Aston Villa where we were playing in those kinds of games and it ended up not so good but it was just great to be back playing in those big games and big atmospheres and being involved with some fantastic players certainly a memorable time so the, one of the questions I would ask you when you're coming to a team like Rangers it's going to be hard it's never going to be easy, and people are warning you, you're taking his shot, you're doing this, you're going to be removing a player, you're going to take a favourites, whatever. The great Davy Cooper mm. is playing that position. Mm. You're coming to the Rangers, as soon as he's obviously saying to you, you're going to get the jersey. How does that feel? Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I thought I was playing with Davy uh, yeah. Cooper, because, I mean, Davy was one of my favourite Scottish players at the time, actually. I remember watching him score a goal against Celtic at, uh, I think it was Hamden, where he flipped One of many. Ball. Yeah. <laughs> He flicked the ball over a few players, as a, and you know, you know, if anybody else had scored that, you know, Jai yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, as I say, David was one of my favourite players then, so I thought I was going to play him. So I was never in, in, expected to uh, replace un, a player who's unreplaceable. Frankly, you know, for me, David was just a unique player, and uh, I was a bit disappointed that we didn't play more often together. Actually, well, we'll follow David took out his toe on David. How was David on? Off the park with that, how did he, how did he react to that? Well, that's what I'm saying. Dave was so nice to me. He, he didn't you didn't think that you know. If, in fact, I was taking his place. Which, as I say, Davey was irreplaceable. But he, you know, we did call him Albert Tutler because uh, Davey did have. He's a, he a dour personality in a way. But once you got to know him, he was funny and dry sense of humour. But um, he treated me really well, and I, I always thanked him for that. And I, and I, when he actually left and went to I think Motherwell. Yeah. I was one of the most disappointed because I used to watch him in training and I think um, he could still show you things that oh absolutely yeah we used to play head tennis together and um, his first touch was just unbelievable the best one of the best I've ever seen or or played it with 
and um, he used to show me how to get get the first touch, get your body in the right position, things like that. So, so he, he was still prepared to mentor you, even yeah, though technically yeah. you were taking his job. Well, yeah, I, I mean, footballers. I think we we all know we all know Respect that. Respect Yeah, we all know that. At the end of the day, you just want to do your best we can, and eventually someone's going to take your place. It's just a matter of time. Whoever does it, but. He was he never holding any grudges or anything like he wasn't that type great, of person. Great to hear he was always my favourite. Yeah. The, so we are looking back on the Rangers career, the you know, see there later on, humour of football won the day. Mm. Uh, we love you up here, we'll always love you, mm. Mark. The what other characters in the Rangers team at the time would you say was do you remember? Well, um the, the lads my age roughly uh, looked after me, you know, uh, Derek Ferguson, Ian Durant and um some of the lads as well, some younger lads who were in the, in the reserves, if you like. So I was more um, hanging around those players because yep. they were my age group. And uh, the married lads uh, still looked after me as well. I mean, people like uh, Ray Wilkins was really, you know, he, he was great to everybody. Um, Terry um, Terry Butcher was as well, very, very helpful as well. So, the, I mean, the, the thing about Rangers, which I realised, is you don't get team spirit by just um, going out and getting drunk or whatever. You get team spirit on the pitch and that's how we... Had a great camaraderie together. Everything we did uh, that I could mention on camera, anyway, we, <laughs> you know, we did, yeah, we did it together, like you know. So really, some great lads, and um, that's what happens when you're successful and you're winning football matches. You, you know, you look after each other. Yeah, and how was it? Was your relationship with Sunnis like how? Yeah, it was good. I mean, um, I wouldn't say I was compliant, but I believe when the manager says jump, you jump, you jump, you just say how, how high, really. So I, I had no problems with. Um, uh, Mr. Sunes, he was abrasive, yes, but that's the way I think um, it should be. I mean, I grew up with Ron Saunders at Aston Villa, who was very, um, um, I wouldn't say disciplinarian, but yeah, you, did, you couldn't mess around with him. Suit, suit Mr. Sunes was a similar, you know, if you crossed him, you'd, he was a boss. He was a boss, yeah. Like in any industry, you'd need a boss to be tell you what to do, what you know, because yeah. the book stops with him after all. Of course, so so on that level, you've got two two great leaders at the same time at the club, mm. Graham Sunes and Walter Smith. Mm. Walker obviously comes on and becomes a legend and yeah. just manager nine in a row, we all know the story. Mm. Never forgotten for the second time he won it. Mm. How was your memories on uh, Walter? And yeah, Walter, the Walter was fantastic for me because probably Walter, he said it's, he saw me play for the uh, England on the 18s and that's where he first saw me play. Yeah. But I think it was there was a good balance between um, as soon as he was slightly abrasive, if you like, and then Walter who was uh, more of a man manager management type player yeah. and the players could talk to him about other things where maybe they wouldn't feel comfortable speaking to Mr Sunas about so I, I, they had a great double act together and uh, obviously Walter was a fantastic coach as well and he, he, he learnt a lot from him learnt a lot from him yeah. definitely so uh, Mark you played for some of the some of the biggest clubs in Britain mm. uh, you played all over Britain I'm here to talk about the Rangers that's my thing of course, uh, yeah. the famous that's mm. my big thing for me the you lifted many trophies in the shots of Royal Blue. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, three league, champ league, league championships and uh, one League Cup. Um, fantastic time, uh, memories, winning those trophies. Because as a boy, it's, it's on your bucket list what you want to do. You want to win trophies, you want to play for your country, you want to you want to be a good player, you want to you know travel the world, all these things. And I was able to tick off most of those at my ranges, which was a fantastic time for me and uh, it's a good time for Scottish football yeah I believe so and uh, you know never forget it and that's why I've got a special place in my heart for Rangers because I had so many good times as a player here yeah I mean I was myself my brothers we watched you we called you the soul man <laughs> that was always your thing uh, the double shuffle though mm. did you practice that did it come naturally I've seen uh, I've seen one of the players recently doing a wee uh, tribute to you mm. first thing everybody mentions mm. is the way you got that ball down and got that back wing was that something you rehearsed or was it yeah yeah I mean um, I think the first time I saw it was in uh, the World Cup, 1974 World Cup, Johan Cruyff did it and um, yeah. I think as soon as the game finished I was in the, in, well we didn't have a garden unfortunately because we we lived in a masonette but as soon as uh, the game finished I was down into the, into the park practicing it and do, trying to do it and uh, doing the Cruyff turn and things like that because he was a, a special player and I, obviously you, you want to do things that these special players do and so I practiced that till um, Keep practicing until yeah, you get that? exactly until I got it right. So what memorable games do you have in the Rangers jersey? What would you say st st stand out the most? Yeah, obviously the, the debut was uh, memorable for maybe the wrong reasons, but you know it was still great. Memorable. Yeah, yeah, still memorable. Uh, but my first goal for Rangers because uh, I've always been a frustrated striker anyway. I always wanted to play yeah. up front and to score my first goal for Rangers because I knew then that um, I was in the record books, if you like, because um, you know Mark Walters, uh, ex, uh, ex old Rangers player, I should say at the time. Yep. 
uh, and scored at least one goal. You know, so that column was filled. So the first goal I scored against Ray Rovers, I believe, and uh, that, that really does stick out in memory because I think I've been about four or five games without scoring, which was quite long for me, even though I played at wide. I normally yeah. scored every th third game on average. But, but just on that, I mean, did you ever score any ordinary goals? It was all st every goal you scored was fantastic. Well, unfortunately, I was never that close in to score those little tap-ins, but I, um, I, I did, I've missed a few, that's for sure. But no, no, uh, unfortunately, not unfortunately, but my, most of my strikes were outside the box and playing where I played. But uh, I was lucky to score some good goals, but uh, a goal's a goal as, as a player. You just want to score or you want to play well. Or, and so. Yeah. And, and obviously, you say you're staying back down in England now. Mm. Um, your football career's over. Mm. You're still passionate about the game. I can see that we talk to you today. But mm. John Gregg once famously said, don't be a stranger, be a Glasgow Ranger. <laughs> and you came in today and you're, you can see the passion's back in you. Mm. Have Rangers stayed away in your career? Oh yeah, without a doubt. Um, it's, a, it's one of the first um, rings on my phone when the Rangers are playing. I always know when Rangers are playing. I always know the results. So as I say, once you're playing for Rangers, it's, it's like um, having title after your name, you know, Marvel yeah. Dex, does the Rangers. And, and because of that, it, it's always been a special club for me. Um, even when things weren't going well with the, 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 the problems, I was still there watching and hoping that things would turn around. And now it looks like it's turning around. Got, they've got a great young manager yeah. at the club and uh, things look good. Great stuff to hear that. So uh, just lastly, but obviously you're in Glasgow, you're promoting the book just now. Mm. You're hoping as many Rangers supporters to buy the book. Sure. Friday night I've got you in the Greatest Strangers Bar of all the Bristol Bar yeah. and you're going to meet the punters, yeah. you're looking forward to that? Yeah, looking forward, as you say, it's, it's a, a world famous bar and uh, it's, it's going to, hopefully we're going to have a bit of banter and uh, talk about the book and um, hopefully a few of them will buy it as well, which um, I think it's... You'll uh, get plenty of sales on the Bristol, well, a good thing with that is there'll be no cameras there, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll have to get me my singing voice going then. Oh, brilliant, <laughs> excellent to hear that. So I'm just going to give you a plug for the book before we finish, it's called Winging It. Mm. And yeah. When is it available from? It's available from today, uh, I think it's launched today, and um, I think you can, there's numerous ways to buy it, but um, I think you can get it on Amazon as well as all the other normal outlets, all good bookshops sh should sell it anyway. Okay, as well as that, if you drop me a message on the GLS TV, I'll be able to get you, or my friend Jeff Holmes, he's also got copies of the book. I'm encouraging as many Rangers fans to get behind this, read the book, read the story, read the legend. Mark, it's a pleasure to meet you today at Ibrook Stadium. Thank you. One thing I can assure anybody that ever got to see Mark, you were only winging it. You were one of the greats. Thank you very much. Cheers. Welcome home, Mark. Thank you. Cheers. Oh, yeah.